In this video, we'll walk through an example of the indeterminate form 0 to the 0. Let's say we have the limit of x to the tangent of x taken as x approaches 0 from the right. Well, by direct substitution, we would have 0 to the tangent of 0, or that is just 0 to the 0 power. Now, a good rule of thumb when you're doing these limits that you have an indeterminate form with some exponent there is to first define this limit as L. So I'll do that up here in the corner so we can keep it tucked away there where we won't mess with it until later, till the end really. So let's write that down, x to the tangent of x. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take the natural log of each side. So not just L, but the natural log of L. Well, the natural log of L then would be the natural log of the limit. And the natural log of the limit of a function is the same as the limit of the natural log of the function. So now we have the limit of the natural log of x raised to the power of tangent of x. Now at this point, I'm going to take this expression and rewrite it. And that is this expression, the natural log of x to the tangent of x, using properties of logarithms. If you have the log, uh, log of something raised to an exponent, you can take that exponent and move it out front. So now I've got tangent of x times natural log of x. And then we will continue to rewrite this product as a quotient, because when we have the limit of a quotient, then that's a better chance of us being able to use L'Hopital's rule if we need to. Okay, so this equals the natural log of x. And by the way, generally, generally, if you have some product, you, a lot of times you're going to keep the natural log in the numerator and then take this other thing and whatever it is and put it in the denominator. So the natural log of x divided by 1 over the tangent of x. I'm not, haven't changed anything. W 1 over tangent of x being divided by 1 over tangent of x is the same as being multiplied by a tangent of x. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this tangent of x as the cotangent of x right now. So natural log of x over the cotangent of x. Okay, now, now we are ready to um, try to take a look at the limit. So the limit, I'm going to smash a limit in there as x approaches 0 from the right. The limit of all of this, well, darn, that's going to be an indeterminate form. In fact, it's going, going to be negative infinity over uh, infinity. So what we can do is take uh, L'Hopital's or apply L'Hopital's rule. So applying L'Hopital's rule means that we will take the first derivative of the numerator and the first derivative of the denominator. So the first derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x. Well, let's clean this up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to, to look at. So I'll take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, and I'm going to say 1 over x over negative 1 over sine squared of x. My brain is better at thinking of the, the main three, sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm going to write it in terms of that. Now I've got a uh, 1 over x divided by negative 1 over sine squared of x. So I can rewrite this as the sine squared of x. And I'm, I'm going to say negative, negative sine squared of x, because we did have a negative here, over x. And of course, it's the limit of all of that. I left myself a little space so I could write that in. Okay, we think we're out of the woods, but we're not. This is another indeterminate form. It's just 0 over 0. So we don't have to pull any uh, rewriting tricks or anything, but we do have to do another L'Hopital. So let's do that. Second L'Hopital, I'll just shorthand that. Second L'Hopital. So 
That is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And the derivative of the numerator is negative 2 sine of x times cosine of x. Remember the chain rule there. And over 1, the derivative of x is just 1. Ah, success. Now, we, have, we do not have an indeterminate form anymore, and we just get um, 0. The limit of all of this as x approaches 0 from the right is 0. That 0, remember, is we were just talking about the natural log of the limit. So that is natural log of L. So we have to apply a little property, and that is e to the natural log of L just equals L. So in other words, e to this value of 0, I'll color code that, equals what we wanted was our L. And we had that in blue originally. So e to the 0 is our limit L, and that is 1. Let's go up and visit that again. Remember this, L was our original limit. So that is what we're looking for. So e to the 0 is L, and that is 1. So our limit of the original function, we'll go up there and visit it, is 1. I can write that here as well if you'd like. And let's scroll back down so you can see what we did in the end.